Hey everybody, here for a Saturday sit-in. <laughs> All right, so I wanna share something that's actually super fresh. Um, it's something that I was dealing with throughout the day today. And um, I was listening to a sermon from Elevation Worship. It was Carl Lentz giving that message. Um, and it just really spoke to my heart. And I think it'll encourage you also. Um, I just wanna share that. And then I'm going to go to a concert. I'm going to um, St. Louis to see Travis Green and Mosaic. So I'm excited about that. But let's start off with a word of prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we just thank you for being God in our lives. Thank you so much, God, that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You are a redeeming God, a restorative God, a loving God, a merciful God. You're a good father. And I thank you, God, that you chose me. You chose every listener that's listening to the sound of my voice. You chose everyone on this earth. You chose them and you love them. And I thank you for that. And Lord, I ask that the words that come from my mouth be nothing short of words from heaven, nothing short of the word of God. And I thank you that it will speak to the listeners and it will help encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so what I want to talk about when anxiety hits. So I was chilling at home, scrolling through social media, and I saw something that like really, really, really made me upset and angry. And then it got me thinking about a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, a lot of things that I've regretted um, in this life. Um, and most recently, I don't know, maybe, what, three years ago or so? And then it just got my mind wandering. Man, what would it be like if I hadn't made that mistake? What would it have been like if I didn't make that decision? If I didn't speak to this person? If I didn't go to this city? If I didn't do school in this town? And it just got my mind rolling. <laughs> I mean, like, I went from, like, zero to 100 within the span of, I don't know, 15 minutes. And... You know, as soon as those things, as soon as those thoughts started happening, these were the words that came to me. We have the divine ability to take thoughts captive and make them become obedient to Christ. Um, and that verse is in, I believe it's 2 Corinthians. Let me find it for you all. I probably should have my Bible open up to the verses that I want to talk about before I start talking, but I kind of just go off the whim, so please bear with me. Okay. All right, so it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and we will start with verse 4. Okay. Okay. We do not wage war in an unspiritual way, since the weapons of our warfare are not worldly, but are powerful through God for the demolition of strongholds. We demolish arguments and every high-minded thing that is raised up against the knowledge of God, taking every thought captive to obey Christ. Um, and... I like the version probably in either the English Standard Version or New Living Translation, but it basically says that we do not wage war in the way that the world does, but the weapons that we use have the divine ability to take every thought captive and make it become obedient to Christ. And you know, as soon as like my mind just got racing, I thought of this verse, take those thoughts captive and make them become obedient to Christ. You know, and I said, all right, cool. I'm going to take these thoughts captive and make it become obedient to Christ. Okay, so what does Christ say? So then that led me to Isaiah 43, um, verses 18 through 19. And I love Isaiah 43. Like, <laughs> I go to that verse so much in life. But um, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Do not remember the past events. Pay no attention to things of old. Look, I'm about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness, in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. You know, so God tells us first off, take every thought captive and make it become obedient to Christ. And then the second thing that we have to think about, okay, if we make it become obedient to Christ, 
what then should we be replacing those thoughts with? We're taking the thought captive, so what do we replace it with? We need to be replacing it with a promise of God. Um, and you know, I, I just had to sit and I prayed and I spoke in tongues over myself and I said, all right, I have the ability to make the choice now. I can continue to like get anxious and think about things that are of the past that don't even matter anymore, or I can sit and focus on what God says. And you know, I think that's a beautiful thing about God. He is not a tyrant. He's not a dictator. Like he's in partnership with us. We have, we kind of do have a say in what happens um, because God doesn't choose for us. He's a gentleman. So, you know, God will make their proposal and then we can decide to go along with what he tells us or not. So I decided and I made that choice that I'm going to forget about the former things. I'm going to forget about the things of old. God is doing a new thing in my life and that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, and you know, this message, I'll actually put a link in the description box. Um, and then also my blog page with the sermon, but the sermon says that we have peace in our pocket <laughs> and you know, the message just, while I was in the shower, I was like literally just jumping up and down and like screaming hallelujah and like giving God praise. Cause it was just so encouraging, but he focused on, um, John 16, 33, where it says, take heart in this life, you will have trouble, but take heart because God has overcome the world. He is our peace, he is our portion. Um, so, you know, not being anxious, having peace is not a feeling. It is not an event. It is not a time period. It is a person, God is our peace. And um, that's what we have to focus on. You know, it's not about what circumstance we're in. It's not about how the situation looks, but it's about knowing whose we are and we are children of God and you know, God controls it all. <laughs> he is the creator of the universe and he controls it all. And if we decide to be in partnership with him, we know that we're in good hands because he never leaves us and he never forsakes us. So, you know, the, the analogy that he gave was um, Carl Lentz, he needed to leave the house and he couldn't find his keys or his cell phone. And he was like, he tore the whole house up trying to look for it. And his wife came home, he's like, hey, like, did you check your pockets? And both of them were in his pockets, you know? So sometimes when we're going through struggles, when we're going through issues, when we're feeling anxious, when we're feeling overwhelmed and worried, you know, we have to think, are we using all the tools in our toolbox? Are we calling on the name of Jesus? Are we focusing on the things that he has told us is true about us? Or are we focusing on our past? Are we not keeping our mind guarded? Are we not keeping our heart guarded? Because in Proverbs 4, I think it's verse 23, it says, guard the heart because all the issues of life flow through it you know are we are we exposing ourselves to situations that we shouldn't that make make us feel anxious um or are we are we calling on the name of jesus are we on our knees praying to the lord are we you know focusing on what he says about us in the word you know and you know quite frankly today i wasn't like i was freaking out you know i I, I didn't have my mind on right. I wasn't focusing on the promises of God. But the beautiful thing is that when we call on the name of Jesus, he comes. He's so present. Um, and as soon as I decided, like, I'm going to take these thoughts captive and make them become obedient to Christ, it was so, you know. And um, I'm just so grateful for God. He's He's good. He's a good father. Oh, he's good. Um, so I wanted to share that message with you all before I go to the concert. I'm actually about to leave right now and I will try and take some pictures and have some videos um, of the artists, but sorry, I'm like crying right now. <laughs> Just thinking about how good God is. But, um, but yeah, you have peace and it comes from God and it comes from like focusing on the word of God and what he says about you and not believing, believing the lies of the enemy. Take those thoughts captive know your tools and your tools are found in the word of God. In Ephesians 6, it tells us that the word of God is our weapon. That is what we use to wage war. You know, it says that we do not wage war in the way that the world does, but the things that we use have the divine power to take strongholds and tear them down. And the weapons that we use is the word of God. So focus on what God says about you. Um, get connected with the church, get connected with a someone who can speak positive life into you and you won't regret it. I promise you. So anyway, 
let me go get going for this concert and um, let's put things out in a prayer. And I just want to ask that you put your hand on your heart right now because um, that's what we need to guard. We need to guard our heart. So if you put your hand on your heart as I pray us out, dear father, thank you for being God. Thank you for being our Lord. Thank you for being our savior. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, God, because you first loved us. Lord, we thank you that you have given us the wisdom through the word. And it tells us that we should guard our hearts because all of the issues of life flow through it. So Lord, give us that wisdom. Show us what we should do and what we shouldn't do, what we should entertain and what we should not. And show us, Lord, the power that we have that comes from you. Help us to see ourselves as you see us. And Lord, we just thank you that you are our peace. You are our portion. You never leave us. You never forsake us. And we love you for that. You're a good daddy. And we give you honor and praise and glory for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I get really emotional just thinking about God. But um, I hope you guys have a blessed night. I am going to go and enjoy the concert. All right. Bye.